Okay, good morning. Uh, today I'm teaching instead of Professor Moisala. Uh, you already know from the lab, I'm Antonio Servetti from the Computer Science Department. Okay, today we are going to look at uh, some of the uh, browser technologies. Uh, it's the first time that we open the browser uh, in this class. And uh, we are going to uh, learn, let's say, the basics of uh, uh, HTML, that is web pages. And uh, HTML, in this case, uh, will comprehend also the CSS, that is the style of the web pages. Okay? We will see also just a bit of JavaScript in the web page, but uh, JavaScript and how to handle that uh, will be the topic of the next, next lesson with Professor Masala. Okay? So we will stop uh, uh, with HTML and CSS mainly. Um, so we will learn how to build uh, a web page. Uh, first of all, uh, some uh, high level details, high level information about uh, uh, web pages. Um, everybody of you uses, uh, uses the web. And uh, this is uh, uh, one uh, a scheme on how do we interact with the, uh, the web technologies when we are browsing, when we are using web pages. Okay? And uh, so we are the users and uh, we divide uh, the world in front-end and back-end, okay? Uh, you already developed something on the back-end, is it right? Okay, you developed some uh, API on a server, uh, and uh, where you were returning the results of the API in which format? JSON, okay? And so what happened is that uh, the user start uh, with a query, that is a request, uh, usually by an URL, okay? The URL points uh, to some resource on the server and uh, it is performed by means of a request that uh, is uh, transmitted with a protocol that is known HTTP, and uh, the server has two choices. One, to retrieve the resource from the file system, okay, that is a file on the file system, or to create, so instead of retrieving, creating the resource dynamically, uh, eventually using a database, okay? Or let's say by means of some programming language. Okay, so retrieve or create. And you remember that uh, by means of the URL in the request, uh, the server side knows uh, what to do there are parameters uh, and so on. And the results, uh, the result get back to the front end, that mainly is the browser, by means of a response that is also HTTP. Okay? Uh, you were returning JSON, but uh, there is also HTML, okay? CSS, we will see there is JS, that is uh, JavaScript files, and so on. Uh, what happens is that the browser uh, um, um, interprets, parses uh, the data that are returned from the server and uh, creates the web page. In the case of JSON, you will only see the JSON data, but if we go and look to 
a real website. Let's see. Polito.it. Dot it, uh, we get the web page. Okay. Uh, one important thing we we learn from the beginning in this in this course in this class is that there are some developer tools in the browser. Uh, so if you go here in the setting, you know. If you, I usually use the shortcut, uh, more tools, web developer tools. Okay, uh, I will try to zoom a little bit. Okay. Okay, here is the Polytechnic website and uh, by means of an inspector, you can look at the code of the HTML page, okay? And uh, as you move around, you will see which block of code on the right corresponds to a given part of the web page, okay? The browser reads the text, HTML code, the web page, is a text file and renders the web page. Okay, and um, there is a, an interesting um, view that is the network view, where you can see that when you request a page, there are a lot of they are called those lines are called resources. Each line corresponds to a URL. And the main page is this one, the one you are requesting. Here you write www.polito.it, but it means give me the root page. Usually it's called index.html. Okay. And this web page, if you look at the response, uh, row is the text file that is the HTML, okay? We are going to uh, describe uh, how different parts uh, will form a web page. But uh, in uh, the web page, there are also uh, some links that point uh, to other resources. And they are downloaded by the browser while it is parsing the web page. So every time it finds some href, source, something with a URL, a file name, and so on, it makes an HTTP request and downloads the other component, the other resources are called of the page. For example, here is the logo. We don't see that, but if we get the URL, copy URL, and open in another web page, we see that those, that resource was corresponding to a logo. And then there are many others. Let's see with some more detail. Okay, you see? There, most of them are images. Okay, image, image, image. There is a script. Oops, sorry. Okay, there is some JavaScript. Okay, there is an icon. And sometime we will see there is also the CSS file. Okay, so a web page is uh, described by a main HTML page text file with a lot of additional resources. Images, JavaScript file, CSS files, logos, and so on. And all of them are retrieved by the browser while it is parsing the page. Any question?
OK. Um, so, what is uh, the task of each one of those resources? So, we say that uh, the main, uh, what we call a page, is mainly a dot HTML file that is a text file. We will see the syntax in a minute. And uh, this file describes uh, the content and the structure of the page. So if you have to write some text, you put the text in the HTML file, okay? The headers, the paragraphs, and so on. And uh, the images, for the images, you just put the URL of the image, that is a text uh, uh, string, and the browser retrieves the image, okay? And you put also the, the link, the URL of the CSS resources and the JavaScript resources that a good practice is to put in separate, separate files because CSS describes the style of the web page and its task is to define the presentation of the page, okay? So we define the content, uh, Polytechnic of Turing, that is the text string, and in the CSS, we describe if it's bold, big, small, underlined, blue, black, or so on, okay? While in the JavaScript files, we write our program, and the program and the code is used for user interaction, okay? To react to user interaction. Uh, the JavaScript uh, code is, is mainly a reactive code. That means that your functions that are also called handlers or callback are called after the users does something, okay? It's called event-based programming because the user clicks something, it generates an event and you have a handler that is a code part that handles that event and does something. Okay, uh, the user scrolls the page, generates an event, you do something. The mouse is moved, generates an event, and you do something, okay? You will see this part with Professor Masala uh, in the next lesson. Okay, uh, this lesson will be a very quick introduction to HTML, so I will refer you to uh, many websites and sources of information. And the main one is called MDN, that stays for Mozilla Development Network. Okay, we will go there, here. You just write MDN, I hope, okay, it's the first result. And this is where you will find all the information about, uh, for example, uh, uh, DOM, Document Object Model, okay? So I uh, invite you to go through this documentation starting from the introduction to HTML if you have never seen HTML, okay? If you already know something, you can start uh, on more uh, advanced tasks. How many of you have ever written an HTML page? Okay. Many of you. Uh, was the page loaded uh, uh, from a, a web server or just double click? How many uh, uploaded the page on a web server? Few, few. The others just throw that uh, in a file and loaded uh, with the browser. Okay. So we will see the difference in a minute. Okay. So uh, I will skip a lot of things about uh, the web page, um, but it's important that uh, we work as developers, okay? So the good behavior of a web developer is uh, to open a page and, uh, oops, uh, it was the wrong shortcut. 
as soon as uh, he opens a page, he opens uh, the developer console, okay? Uh, I'm in charge of the labs, so I will, I'm telling you, in the labs, I always want to see this console open, okay? Because it's uh, the debugger console. Every time something wrong or good happens in the browser, it's reported here, okay? And um, you can write to this console, and if there are errors, they appear in the console. Uh, the browser usually tries uh, to um, uh, skip the errors, okay? So continue doing the things without taking care of the errors. So you don't, you will not see messages on the web page, you will see messages in the console. Something is messed up in the web page, you don't know why, look at the console, okay? This has always to be open, and then you will move between the inspector, the network, and so on. There is also a debugger uh, when you will start to write the JavaScript, okay? But not today. Okay, and we will learn how to use that. So, uh, just a bit about uh, the programming part, then we leave uh, that uh, out. Uh, we said that uh, an HTML page is a text file. Okay, so that's a text file that starts with, for example, HTML. And then there are those that are called tags. Okay, and uh, those tags are organized in, uh, in a tree. So there is an open tag that is like that with um, angle brackets and a close tag with uh, this uh, slash at the beginning. That means that uh, Everything comprised between the open and the closed stack is part of this stack, is the content of this stack. Okay, so I can write like that that HTML is the root, okay, the father or mother of every other uh, part of the web page, and I can put uh, two children in the HTML uh, element that are, for example, the add that will contain something, and I will close like that, and the body that will also contain something, and I will close like that, okay? So what happens is that these is the content of the head, this is the content of the body, and both of them are children of uh, the HTML element, okay? And they are sidling between them, okay? One adjacent to the other. There is also the order, head is first, body is second, okay? And so you can depict like that the structure of the tree. Um, what happens is that uh, when you are going to work with JavaScript, those, uh, this text, those tags, become elements. What's the difference between the tag and the element? The tag is the text, the string you use to uh, write the HTML page. The element is an object for your programming language, okay? The browser there is a definition that is called the DOM that defines for each tag, which is the object that corresponds to that tag, and given that it is an object, it has an API, okay? An interface, it implements some uh, uh, methods, it has some properties and so on, okay? And if you go into uh, the console, 
you choose inspect, you select this one. This is a H1. We don't know what the meaning, but it's a tag. If you go here and open the DOM, we see that this, is, this become an object with function, with properties, and so on. So we can program with that. Okay, that's important. If you want to go uh, on MDN and you look uh, HTML element, uh, you know something about uh, object programming. Is it true? Okay. And so you see the HTML element is the base element, is the ancestor of uh, every other custom element in the page. Okay, you see here uh, the hierarchy of uh, the element and so on. You will see the properties, you see the methods and so on. So please refer to that when you are going to program. Okay, we will see cascading style sheets in the detail later and uh, we will use a bit, little bit of JavaScript. We will use uh, predefined JavaScript. And uh, as you import libraries in your JavaScript program with NPM, require, import, and so on, in a web page, the import is done like that. You use a tag that is a, tag, a script tag, and you put the URL of uh, the JavaScript file, okay, in the text. Uh, what is uh, SRC, what is type, and so on? Those are called attributes. Okay, this is the tag name. And inside the tag name, you can write attributes, name equal value, Okay, you have a name of the attribute and a value of the attribute. Name equal value. Usually it's like that. And the attribute become properties. Of the object. Okay, so when you will program element.src is this value. Okay, we are going to import uh, uh, some JavaScript uh, for interaction. Uh, we see later when we, we use a framework that is called Bootstrap. Okay. Okay, that's all for the first round of slides. Okay, just to give you an overview of uh, the environment. Any question till now? Okay, so we can move to the HTML. Um, so, um, About the HTML, we will, we will see uh, some essential things. Uh, that is mainly the name of the tags, their meaning, their tags, their meaning and uh, how to structure a well-described page. Okay? Uh, so, a bit of background about uh, HTML. Everybody knows that uh, the father of HTML is Tim Berners-Lee from CERN that uh, says uh, uh, we need uh, a way to have uh, linked the documents. Okay, so a document where you can uh, write text and also a link that refers to another document and you can click and move to the other document. So you can connect the document. Uh, we must say that uh, HTML evolved uh, a lot from uh, 1991. 
uh, some milestones in 1997 was uh, took uh, uh, the, the W3C took uh, charge of defining the standard. Okay, the, the W3C is the uh, standardization uh, committee, the standardization entity that uh, defines uh, how we write and read and interpret HTML. Okay, and we need someone that is not Microsoft, not Apple, not uh, um, Huawei, and so on, that takes care of uh, writing a standard. Okay, so everybody uses the same language. Otherwise, we will have a language uh, by Microsoft, so HTML, uh, Microsoft HTML that works on Edge. Uh, H, uh, Google HTML that works on Chromium and so on. There was a time in the past, we may say before 1997, where that happened. It was the browser wars. Okay, everybody was competing with uh, the others. Okay, now fortunately we have this consortium that defines how we can, what we can put in the HTML and how browsers have to interpret that, okay? And um, another milestone is uh, on uh, uh, 2014, where um, uh, we had the uh, definition of HTML5, uh, five is just the number after four, so the new version of HTML, but the important point is that another working group, that's the meaning of the WG, the WOT working group, that stands for Web Hypertext Application Technology Working Group, took care of uh, uh, expanding HTML with a different point of view. Okay. The difference of the point of view was that previously HTML was for writing web pages, that is documents. Okay. And since HTML5, HTML become a language to describe applications also. Okay. That's why this course is called web application and not web design. Okay. And so web application means also user interaction. And yeah, and the, since that, uh, that milestone, uh, you will not see HTML 5.1, 5.2, 5.2.3, .2 and so on, some versioning, because it will stay HTML 5 and it become a living standard. That seems every day you can find something that changed in the standard. You have uh, to uh, comply with that, but uh, it doesn't change the version of that. And this is the logo. Uh, it's not a question, just a question mark. It's uh, the logo of HTML5. Uh, so there is uh, the link here. It doesn't work with this viewer, but it may work with the uh, PPT. Let me open this. Okay. Okay, this is where you find the standard and all the definitions and so on. It's a quite huge standard, the HTML5. What is the board? Is here. Okay, uh, as you see, there, it's a big family, uh, and there is also CSS that is uh, defined by, by the W3C, while JavaScript is defined by the ECMA, ACMA, uh, organization, standardization uh, committee. And uh, since uh, HTML is uh, changing, okay, you need to check the compatibility of the language you are using. 
Okay, and there are some websites, for example, can I use that uh, if you search for a functionality, for example, drag and drop and uh, other things, it will tell you since which version of the browser it has been implemented, uh, it works, it doesn't work, and so on. Okay, so you will see green or red, red is not supported, green is supported, and uh, usually this line is the last version of the browsers, and uh, you can also check which is the last version of the browser in some website. And one good thing is that uh, browsers automatically update. Uh, as you notice, sometimes they write you close to update the browser. So people tend to have the last version of the browser. Otherwise, you need to write your code that is compatible also with older version and it's cumbersome. Okay? There are some tricks to do that, but you will see them when you will learn JavaScript. So let's go to the basic uh, HTML document structure. I, I already said that it is um, a tree of elements. Oops. And that is important, uh, the nesting. Okay? If you um, omit some closed tag, the browser tries to uh, guess uh, that you missed that uh, and try to insert them in the right position. You don't see a warning, maybe, but the page may not work correctly. Okay, so you notice something wrong and uh, you correct that. Uh, there are also some uh, validators, so you can uh, upload your, your, your web page on the website and then run a validator that checks that the HTML is written correctly. Okay, that's a good point, it's a good thing to do. And as I said, the, the start tag, the end tag, the attribute, okay, and uh, for example, when uh, you put something that is uh, uh, outside of the text. This is called the text, inner text for the uh, precision. Okay, and so you can retrieve that using the inner text property. Okay. Um, what an, imp an important point uh, is that uh, there is a, a declaration here that say that the document type is HTML and some formalities that you can put uh, mainly in the header tag to describe your page. Uh, if I go, for example, to here, yeah. uh, let me increase a little bit. Okay, I create uh, um, basic HTML page dot HTML okay. uh, you know how to create a file I remember okay and if I start here and I write uh, HTML I can just write uh, the opening and closing tag or if I accept the suggestion HTML5 from Visual Studio Code this is a snippet that creates the same syntax we have seen before with, uh, for example, this uh, addition. That means it's text, but UTF-8. There is uh, some language. There is uh, some definition of the viewport and so on. Okay, those are additional information. Uh, they are optional. Maybe the required one are just uh, those and um, you can also look online some boilerplate uh, HTML. Okay, let's increase a little bit. Uh, remove the astronaut. Okay, go away. And uh, it helps you with uh, this boilerplate. That is uh, text that you can borrow from somewhere. 
And uh, what do you see? You see a tag that is for the title. Title is what is shown here, okay? In, uh, in the tab. Then uh, there you can put a description, uh, web application one. No, I cannot write here, but you can exercise uh, week, uh, week five exercise and so on. You can create uh, uh, an icon that is the one shown here usually. And then uh, you can add uh, other things. Uh, uh, more five, five icons to support uh, different resolutions. Uh, you, we will see that we can add uh, a CSS. So it adds another row and so on. Okay. There is no shame of copying from somewhere. I'm doing the same. The important thing is to know that this is the doc type, uh, and then there is HTML tag, head tag, body tag, okay? And the title, at least here, it's good to put uh, at least uh, those informations. Okay, what happens is that this structure, as I said before, is translated in a tree of elements, okay? Uh, I already said that, that uh, you need uh, all those. Okay, and so something about uh, the HTML tags or elements. As you see, sometimes we use tags, sometimes we use elements. They, we use, uh, uh, without too much discrimination, them, uh, usually referring, referring to the same thing, but remember the difference. And um, so we can differentiate uh, uh, the HTML elements or tags between elements that have a meaning and uh, elements that uh, have no meaning. Uh, what do we mean by meaning? We mean a semantic meaning that is uh, uh, that give information, the semantic, give you information about uh, the content of the tag, okay? For example, a tag that is called title says that if I write something inside the tag, this is the title, okay? If uh, I write uh, I use another tag and I write H1. H stays for header. That means this text, for example, welcome, is an header, okay? Um, if I use P, P stays for paragraph. This is the text of the paragraph. So a paragraph has a header and a text. We will see some examples. And there are other uh, tags with no special meaning, no semantic. Those are particularly the div and the span that we will see later, okay? Um, okay, we can have a look at that with an example. Let's move those pages closer. Okay, uh, how can we see the content of a web page? I can, for example, open uh, the finder and I can say open with uh, Firefox. Okay, and the page is open in Firefox. Uh, it is retrieved from uh, the disk, okay, the file system. This is the protocol, it's called file, and this is the path to this file, okay? But if you do like that, yes, you can see the HTML, but most of the JavaScript will not work, okay? So another technique, a better technique, is to install a plugin that is called live server, for example, and once you have installed this live server, 
you can go to your file, right click, open in the live server. Yeah, it opens Chrome, but I will, I will get the URL. This URL points to your local host, some port, and then here is the name of the folder. Uh, it starts from the root of the workspace in Visual Studio and the file name. Okay, so you get this URL, you move uh, to your preferred browser, and you get the web page. You don't see anything because we didn't write any content, okay? We just wrote the header. Uh, probably you can see the title that was document, and here the title is document. If I change that and I write uh, uh, web applications and I save, there is some JavaScript that automatically updates the page and I see web applications. Okay. Uh, let's move these apart. Uh, dock on the bottom and move this on the side. Okay. So, as I said, we can uh, write some HTML. For example, H1 is an header, an header. So I write web applications. I save and the tag is rendered. And then I put a paragraph. This is the HTML class. And you see the paragraph appears in the page. Okay. Uh, why the paragraph is below and not beside the header? Does somebody know the answer? Why the text of the paragraph is here, okay, and not there, and not beside that? Because if I write uh, another paragraph, this is the second paragraph. It goes below. But uh, every letter, every word is one beside the other. Okay? I can add, for example, let me see if I remember right. B. Never use B because it's for presentation and style, as you see, this tag has been placed beside, not below, this one, okay? Uh, the reason is because uh, there are some tags that are, have a uh, inline display uh, behavior, and there are some tags that have a block display behavior. And for example, H1P have a block display behavior. That means that they take the full browser width. As you see, I go over web application and it takes all the width, even if the text ends here. Okay, and uh, starts a new line, so it do, do not con does not continue, begins from a new line, um, and uh, is added on bottom of the others. On the other side, if the display is in line, it occupies just the necessary space, like for example, this one is the P tag, okay? Uh, does not start a new line, you don't see going to the new line, and uh, is placed left to right, if you write uh, left to right. If you write on the other side, it will be right to left. Okay, that's the difference. 
If I want to change the style, I can write like that, display in line. Probably I need to use the bottom. And you see the paragraph are one after the other, okay? No new line, no full width, and so on. Okay, this one and this one. Just the space they occupy, the necessary space. Okay. Um, yeah, we will go through the different, uh, it's just an, it will be just an overview. I will show you some examples in you have uh, instead to go through the documentation and discover uh, the meaning of the other uh, tags. Okay, I don't have time to describe all of them. So, um, for example, uh, we have seen some adding content, H1, H2, H3. Uh, H1 is the most important and the bigger, H2 is uh, less important and a little bit uh, smaller and so on. For example, if I change these to H2, I can create two of them. H2, You see, it's a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. uh, then there are some sectioning tags. Uh, that means uh, mainly that uh, uh, when you are going to define the layout of a page, you can uh, use tag that have a meaning refer that refers to the layout. So you can use a header, and notice that is header, not head. Head is another tag. This is header, and inside the header there is a navigation bar, okay? And so you are describing the structure of the page with uh, those tags, okay? Then a side is something uh, that is on, on the side. Main is the main content, and the footer is the part below the page. Um, Notice that uh, those tags defines only the semantic, not the position in, in the page, okay? Because uh, if I try to use uh, them, uh, for example, I write here uh, a side, and here main, I cannot copy and paste. Okay. It nothing changed in my web page. Okay. Because it's just the semantic. They don't uh, bring uh, some presentation information with them. If I go into the web page, I see in the inspector that they are present. Okay. Main, aside. But it's just some information that you structure in the web page. Okay, we will see how to uh, present them in a different way later. Okay, we have already seen paragraph. Okay, and we will see other. Uh, yes, at home, just look at them and do some uh, practice by yourself. Okay, um, what else? Um, we are the used B for the for the bold. Uh, we can use IMG for the images, for example. If I want to uh, put an image in the web page, I need to have the image. Uh, for example, let's get. Image 
Okay, this one. Uh, save image as uh, something. QA layout. Okay. Then you get the image from the download folder. You move in the week five folder. Okay. So the image appear, appears here. Okay. Uh, maybe you put uh, that in a images folder. Move. Okay. And if you want to put the image in your web page, for example, here, you use the tag EMG. This is a tag where that is self-closed. Okay. So you close that like that with the slash and the greater than. And then you add an attribute that is source. And source is the path of the file name, the path of the file, with respect to this HTML file. file. Okay? So if you look at that, to reach the image, I have to write images and the file inside the folder that is called images. So I write from this folder, images, and then QA and so on. If I save, I see the image here. If the path is wrong, for example, you just write the file name. Okay. What happens is that you don't see the image. Okay. If you go to the network tab, you see that it tried to download this uh, this file, but it was not found because the path is wrong. Okay, so we go back, we write the right one, and we see the image in our page. Okay, uh, we can use also links. Uh, they are called A because it stays for anchor, which is a strange thing. And we can say that this header can become an anchor. So around the text, we write A to match. OK. In, in this case, the URL is uh, written in an href attribute. OK. HTTPS polito.it, for example. You see the behavior of the text changes. It becomes a link. And if I click uh, too many W, and if I click, uh, if I click, uh, OK, I go to the Polytechnico web page. OK? So, uh, we have CA, then later we will see a button. Uh, those are for user input, but uh, we will not see them in this class, but later. Oh, it's important, a table. Okay. So, for example, I can open this uh, image. Okay. You will find that these... Uh, mock-up on the, on the website, in the repository of the course. OK. Uh, that's not the link. OK. Materials. You go into the Wix, week five, exercise. This is a, a task we are going to do today and uh, mainly is to take uh, this uh, image okay and uh, design a web page like that okay um, so let's open this image 
we put this image here. This is our HTML. Okay, and this is the web page. Okay, let's create uh, another file that is uh, 01qahtml.html, let's say structure. Okay, remember, HTML is for content and structure. Okay, so we do the classic uh, uh, stuff. And then we try to create uh, this page, okay? Um, so, the first part, the page can be structured in a header section, main section, and footer section, okay? And so, let's load this new page. If I go back, I see all the pages and load this one. Okay, there is no content at the beginning. I will put a header. Okay, with the text. If overrun. Uh, no, it was not. Uh, I should. And then I say a main part of the page and a footer. Okay, I'm using these semantic tags to give some meaning to the HTML file, the HTML text. And in the footer, I write copy that is a strange symbol, and uh, web applications 2003-2004, okay? And what's inside the main uh, part section of the page? This is uh, the question text. Okay, I can write like that but they say this is a paragraph, okay? So I can put a P to say that this is a paragraph. It doesn't change too much. There is just some more space. This is the default, default style that the browser uh, connects to the text. And then answers is an header, okay. Uh, since this was header 1, we can create an header 2, that is smaller. Answers, okay. And then the most inter interesting part is uh, this table, okay. There is a table tag that we can use to define a table. Uh, you can uh, Look at the slides for additional information, or even better, you write MDN table, and you go on this website, and it gives you all the information, the examples. You can also write here and change the text, okay, in real time, and do everything you want to practice on, okay? and uh, describes uh, what are the attributes, the tags, and so on. So I will go very quickly over that, uh, just to show you the basic structure of the table. And the table has uh, a header, row, table head, a body, table body, eventually a footer, table foot, and every row is a table row tag, that contains one or more table data tag, okay? Uh, inside the body of the table, you use table data for every cell. cell. Inside the uh, head, you use it table head, okay, for the headers. 
So for example, I will define a head, okay, that contains some headers. We know they are one, two, three, four, five. So I can copy that five times. And I write date in the first one, text, author, score, and action. OK. Uh, yeah, you don't see that is a table. We can do a little trick that is add an attribute, border equal to one, and it shows the border. So we notice that those are cells. OK? And then we can create the body. And the body is made by multiple row. And each row has uh, five cells that are table data, where you put uh, some text, for example, 0102003, answer one, Clark, that is the name of the author, 10, that is the score, and uh, yeah, it's, we will see that later. Okay. And you see there is a row. If you take this text and copy multiple times, you get a table. Okay, obviously uh, the content is all the same. Let's go back. OK, so we created a table. As you see, there is just the structure and the content. OK, there is uh, uh, mostly no uh, style or behavior, except the default one that is very poor. Uh, any question about the tags, the HTML? There was, ah, okay, the, by, by author here, okay, uh, yes, so how can we manage uh, the author? Okay, uh, we can write uh, E by author. As you see, it's uh, not the right presentation, but we can change that later, okay? Uh, we can use, uh, for example, uh, uh, we will use them later. We still have to use the div and the span tag. We will see them later. OK. Uh, before the break, I would like to finish this set of slides. And uh, some, uh, something about uh, some particular attributes that you can uh, put inside any tag, uh, any elements, and uh, for example, uh, previously you have seen that uh, I can define a style attribute where I write a, a fragment of uh, style language, Cascai CSS language to define the presentation, OK? I will just show you an example, because later we will use uh, uh, a different syntax, OK? So for example, I can uh, go here in the P and do style uh, as a previous display in line. And uh, maybe the ground color red. Okay, you see? Uh, sorry. It changed 
and the background color become red. Okay, so this is a little bit of styling inside the tag. If I copy this to the other one, those will be put one after the other. Uh, then you can assign, we will see those uh, later. You can assign some uh, identifier to the tags with the, the ID or the class attribute. Uh, what is the big difference between them is that the ID that you assign to a tag must be, is usually unique. Okay, so it, uh, uh, it is present in the HTML page only once in that place and it's not repeated. It identifies just one tag, okay? On the other side, when you use the class attribute, you define, let's say, uh, labels inside that, but this label can be associated to multiple tags, okay? So it may be repeated in other places of the page. For example, I can put here uh, this is the question, ED question text, okay? And I will never use again the ID question text in the page, just there, okay? Uh, on the contrary, I can uh, use uh, uh, something like uh, class, for example here, class equal, equal I, I light, and I can use that in different places. Okay, we will see when we, we use the CSS, that uh, we can associate some behavior, for example, uh, yellow background, to this uh, label. And so every tag that has a class highlight will be highlighted, okay, with a yellow background. Okay? So the difference is this one. ID is unique, class can be uh, repeated multiple times. And uh, the last thing about HTML, then we can have a, a break, is that uh, there are some wildcards tags that are div and span that are just used to group tags together, okay? Uh, for example, instead of uh, repeating class, in this tag, in this tag, and in this tag, I can just remove that. Use a div, group all those elements in the div. So PP and H2 become children of div. They are contained inside the div, and I can use class equal highlight on the father. That can have a meaning like, I would like to highlight all the content of the div. Okay, so I grouped them. It doesn't change anything in, in the view, except that if I go and look at the content, I see that there is a div. You see, the div that is the, uh, the blue portion of the page is made by the two paragraphs and H2. Okay, that's grouped. If I go to the paragraph, it's just that one. 
if I go to the div, is all the group, okay? Uh, the difference between div and span is that if I put div here, let's say there is no grouping, but, but uh, okay, this is some grouping. You see, using the div that is a block element, display block, I go to the new line. And this block takes the full width. Instead, if I use span, I can group Antonio Servetti together, but there is no new line. That's the difference. Div creates a new line, span does not create the new line, because one is block and the other is new line. Okay, uh, this is the validator, and this is some additional information if you want to investigate further on uh, the syntax and so on. Okay, I will stop for 10 minutes, for example, at 11.35 we can start again.